Well, I pounded on her till hell wouldn't have it. And you know what? I even broke the mold. They broke the mold when they made me, baby. What's up, y'all? Anthony Cordova here, and we're back on the 58 Impala Lowrider build. If you watched my last video, the Media Blaster story, you would have seen that we're in the sheet metal repair stages, this particular build, in particular the floor. The frame is completely stripped. The suspension is completely stripped of all its rubber bushings and ball joints. We ended up taking the car to two different Media Blasting facilities to get the car completely stripped down to bare metal and epoxy powder primer, which is a baked on powder coating primer. This car had an unusual amount of undercoating in all the wheel wells, the underside of the frame, and the whole underside of the car, so we had to scrape all that off. Unfortunately, what I thought was a really clean car turned out to be bad repair work, so we're redoing a lot of the previously done sheet metal work on this 58, and that's not easy because a lot of this stuff will have to be one off, simply because there isn't a lot of parts available for the first year Impala. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and helps in keeping me motivated to bring you new videos. If there's anything specific you want covered, please leave it in the comment section below. With that being said, let's get to the rest of the video. So all in all, the frame looks pretty good. Went around and got all the big chunks off, got in the corners. And then the rest of this, the uh, powder coater will take care of. And I just kind of wanted to make sure that everything that I could see, I dug out and the big chunks still has got some shit ton of powder coating on it, but this stuff was pretty tough except for like where the grease was at. It was nice and soft because the grease had penetrated it quite a bit, but where the there was no grease, this thing was hard to get off. The only thing I see is concerning is on these brackets. You can see right here, it's got some weld with some, some brazing rod right there, both of these. And then there's two holes right here that looks like they hooked on to pull because that wouldn't be a common place to, to tow from, but maybe it got towed at one point and bowed these out, but these are supposed to be nice and flat. And I'm not sure if this is some heat. This orange stuff under here is like heat, some heat um, staining, you know, from, from heating this up or not, but we're gonna have to measure, measure this frame and make sure everything's copacetic. So we're not fighting a bunch of alignment issues on the finished product, but Overall, it's pretty nice frame, real convertible frame. You can tell by the um, by the extra reinforcement on these. On the top, if you look from the other side, this plate right here is on these is um, unique to the convertible, I believe. Don't quote me 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. So all in all, pretty decent car, except for some shoddy repair work that somebody did on it before. But overall, not a not a bad car so far. I had to hammer out some. Flat, um, at a blacksmith, some metal back here where it was bent, but these are common to bend back here. They're pretty weak on these on these back frame sections of these Impalas. They're, they're not real strong. They're kind of thin back here. A lot of guys will go ahead and run a plate in here and just kind of box that in and make it stronger. Probably going to do that. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Maybe for exhaust or something, but might get rid of that or, or leave it and figure out what it's for. But most likely we're going to box all this in right there. So as you can see, the car's back, got the 58 back from the, the blaster 
not very happy with the outcome. This thing is just full of fish eyes and it doesn't surprise me because this thing was right next to a detail shop, which I didn't think about in the beginning. This thing just has a ton of fish eyes in it everywhere. Granted, it is primer and most of them will come off, but literally, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty disgusted with the whole, with the whole job and the way it went. So now, so now what we have to do is we're, I'm today, it's Saturday, and I came in to load up the rest of the parts. I ended up bringing home the inner fenders, the fenders, anything that had undercoating on it, the fifth wheel pan, the skirts, ended up bringing them back to the shop and with a heat gun and just spatula, just scraping everything off. So now we're, we're, we're dealing with another powder coater. Hopefully, fingers crossed that everything will go well with this guy. The guy that we're taking it to now is gonna have, it's gonna be zinc primer for bare metal. So hopefully this thing holds up. I'm just hoping that this contamination that's in this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass because once the car gets contaminated, it's like you have to take extra steps to make sure that 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 contamination doesn't continue to like snowball. But it's back. We went and rescued it Thursday and let's just say that it didn't go well. That being said, it's just some of the bumps that you run into on these big projects like this. Uh, that's all that you can really be said about it. It takes a lot of determination, a lot of patience when you're dealing with something as big as this a big project like this these are they are very time consuming and labor intensive jobs so you have to be patient for about a week i've been scraping undercoating off the inside of these of these panels which if i would have known that he couldn't get everything off with the with the blaster i would have just went ahead and did it to start with it would have saved us a lot of time and headaches Fortunately, they don't make a lot of pieces for this 58. It's a one-off deal. Even the mounts for the body I f I'm finding out are different. So apparently it goes 58 and then it goes 5960 for the floor pans and then 61 to 64 are all the same pretty much. And convertibles are gonna have extra mounts for, for sturdiness and strength because you don't have a roof per se. So what I'm gonna do on these, on these brackets, since they don't make any of them, I'm gonna probably end up either having somebody make me some of these or probably just pull them off because they're in pretty good shape. They've just been like they ran something over on this car on this one side. If you look, there's there's more on, on, on this other bracket right here. There's this floor braces. There's there's another huge dent right there. So most likely this car ran over something at one point or landed on something. I checked the frame. It's pretty decent, it's nice and nice and square. So so yeah, these can probably get fixed. I will take them off and, and hammer and dolly those on, on, a, on like a flat surface on a, on a welding table or something like that and then weld them back in and just just take my time and get get the, the spot welds all drilled out nice and then we decided to go ahead and replace all these inner floor pans that they've already done you can see right here but they just kind of gobbed everything up on this thing and they just did a really messy job in here if we want to do nice red oxide this is all going to show it's you know it's going to be this satin sheen like this so it's going to show all these little dents like this and the owner wants this nice so if you know you, you do put it up on a lift or or stick a mirror under at a show it, it's all nice and nice and smooth you know the idea on these old cars is to make it look like it's never been repaired before not like this I mean this is just garbage right here these cars that come from the Midwest they're all kind of like this people you know get a wild hair up their butt and you know want to make some money so they'll buy a car and, and they find out it's all rusted because of the climate and either like salt on the roads or or what have you and then they'll and they get too far in these things and they don't know how to properly replace all the sheet metal and then you get just gobs of pretty much shit so what we're gonna do is just basically turn chicken shit into chicken soup on this thing you can also see here like they just went ahead and this is the old panel and they has got rust holes in it and they just laid that other one in there and they didn't even put the supports in there all the way flat against the panel there's there's a gap on all these right here so it's just a it's just a kind of a messy job that they did on this thing so i'm having to go up in here and, and, and cut all these out again and, and and repair them and, and replace them or actually put them weld them back in so remove and and um and reinstall them again with you know the welding and, and then on these in here on these other sections of these floor pans where they didn't they don't make any of this stuff for a, for a 58 impala so you have to pretty much make all this stuff they just left it like you know with, with a bunch of bunch of rusted metal and and we'll have to go in there and make these make these pieces and it wouldn't be that hard really just a little wood buck and and 
and bend some sheet metal over here and you can make these these are pretty simple by hand right here so so yeah that's that's what we're doing on the 58 i've already cut the braces out of this back piece i'll have to run a kicker from from this bar up here up there to the rocker and then I'll, cut, I'll have to cut I'll have to cut the support loose right here and then I don't want this to flex either way up or down or you know come out of whack so I'll, I'll go in there and they just kind of laid it over the top like I showed you on the outside and I'll go in there and fix that right so yeah we're gonna end up having to redo the floors again on this thing which it's probably a good idea to just do it right do it right the first time that I get a hold of it and even though it's a little bit more of a pain in the ass because you got to go and, and cut off all these janky ass welds and, and then repair all this stuff that they just hammered like hammered dog shit and, and go in here and hammer and dolly all that stuff flat but it'll be a nice piece when it's all done piece cut out and I have my template laid on top this is the brace for the right rocker to front cowl brace and it also joins the floor to the to the a pillar as well so my plan is is to go ahead and trim out this template section by section and then trace onto the metal onto the sheet metal and from there, I'll go and get some appropriate size flat steel and then make some dies and then I'll get my press and I'll press this along with probably beating the crap out of it till it gets to the shape that I want. And then I'll put it in there. Good thing is it's 16 gauge, so it'll take some abuse, but I should be able to knock it out with the first try, hopefully. And if not, I can always get some more 16 gauge 
sheet metal and, and start over because this stuff's all trial and error right now. But yeah, I have my, my template made and I will be cutting this template up because it's a paper template, putting all the, the curves in it on the sheet metal that I need to and make a die and press and hammer and get this thing to the shape that I need so it'll fit in there and I can weld it up. going this morning I got this wood buck I'm making out of some hardwood some red oak that I found at the Home Depot and here's the other part of the the pattern so the idea is to cut another section out along this line here and sandwich the metal in between and then I'm gonna sandwich the flat part with this section here and then there's another there's another indent on this on this portion of it where I have it outlined. And then this will be cut separate too because this has to move a little bit. So I'll sandwich another another section of that flat part and, and then I'll go ahead and hammer. I'll hammer this edge here like so and that'll get that that'll get that uh that indent on the on the metal. The only thing I'm hoping because I can't really bolt these two together or or at least I think I can't Maybe I can strap it together somehow, but um, so this section goes down instead of just being like an in like a one solid indent. This piece goes down and then goes flat. So my thinking is, if I bolt that, if I sandwich the a piece of wood in here, in this section here on the flat part, and then I I sandwich this section which is flat in here, it won't move, and then I'll I'll sandwich this, but in here I'll put a, a piece in here and then hammer all this. 
hammer all this down and then this will stay flat on the bottom and this will move. And then whatever else I can do, I can finish on like a hammer and dolly. I'm gonna weld some hammer and dollies to, to some, some channel iron. And I got some spare extras over here that I just threw over here that I'm gonna um, cut up, probably, probably cut up this one right here and make it more round and polish it. And then I'll, and then I'll do this one with that flat edge and then the round. And then this one I'll, I'll probably weld on top of a stand too. Like kind of like raise it up like this way with, with like a piece of square tubing coming down from here. And then this one I'll probably cut in half and then put some stands on these and then weld those to some channel iron. And then I can clamp that down to like an A-frame or whatever I got these right here that I'm working on right now. Or I can make some. I have a bunch of scrap. And then there's a whole scrap yard over here from the from the um, previous building, and this is all from the from the from the previous building that was here. These are all brand new buildings where I'm at now. You can see the prefab prefab buildings, but the other buildings that were here was an old big old uh, ag ag equipment warehouse, and they had all these cool cool iron from the old building that they. You know hung shit up on probably there's some racks right there there's some some big round tubing and then there's some channel iron that i found over there if you see it's against the wall and then i found this other piece of tubing here it's about two inch or two and a quarter i'll make a i'll make a pipe anvil and then um yeah and so and so i also got this um piece of iron that I'm gonna that I'm gonna cut up and then shape and make a make a die for for this for this area right here that'll that'll hammer in here with the I'll weld I'll weld this onto a an air hammer little uh plug or whatever. It takes a little time to do these videos so I wouldn't mind if you would hit the little like thing and hit the subscribe and don't forget that notification bell so that you can be updated whenever i do do these videos got that fitting pretty good on there if i do not say so myself i probably won't get all the way into here i should have made that a little flatter right there kind of missed the mark on that but you know i could just hammer less in there and i don't think it'll get all the way in there anyway because it's going to be hard to stretch this 16 gauge i might i might have to end up using a little heat but but that's the idea right there is to get that get that shape in there voila from years of doing body work in bondo shape shit shape it i still got a little bit to go right there i'm gonna make that nice and toy and then i gotta like get the rest of that little crack that little butt crack in there right there and then i got a little crazy with the with the saw my little dremel, my little dremel vibrator
So I got all my pieces made. This is the camera form for the top section. This is for the bottom. Focus here. And then this is gonna be for the that one flat section that I showed you earlier. So now I got them all bolted together and I'm gonna go ahead and make the surfaces all even and get this get the shapes all symmetrical to each other. Especially on these, I have to hammer hammer in like around this around these edges. So I have to make sure that they're somewhat even so that there's similar press all the way around. So you know, freaking rocket science shit going on right here. So with that said, let's do it. So the next step is to clean all that bullshit up and then I will clamp the whole piece with their wood forms to the to the 16 gauge right here per the pattern. So I'm gonna get to work. Oh yeah, then I gotta drill through. Once I clamp that to the to this board right here, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it secure to the board, like I said already. And then I'm gonna then I'm gonna drill through the actual sheet metal, put the screws in and start to hammering. So we went to Harbor Freight this morning and got some good old clamps. Got those deep throat clamps. Harbor Freight, don't hate. And I also went to my storage and I picked up Snap-on clamps. And I found some more dollies to make some more 
tools out of homemade tools so I can clamp this thing down. Well, I pounded on her till hell wouldn't have it. And you know what? I even broke the mold. They broke the mold when they made me, baby. No, but I broke the, uh, I broke the, the hammer for him that I that was hitting on it so hard. Let me show you. So yeah, there's, there's part of the hammer form that I broke. I got a huge mess. I got into it and I just didn't want to stop and record, so. You missed me going in here with the air hammer. I got some footage of it yesterday with the air hammer just going and making the forms. So this is what we're left with right now. I still got to fine tune it a little bit and cut the holes, but I still, you know, like go around the edges and fine tune it some more. Uh, it fits pretty decent. It's good enough for me to, to get in there and, and hammer it around a little bit more and weld it. There's still some fine tuning that needs to go on, but for the most part, I mean, it's, I got to clean it up with some sanding and, and prep all the, prep it all out too. And I ripped it over here where it has to get really deep. I ripped it right there. So I'm gonna have to weld that little section, which good thing is this is a 16 gauge. And then this is the brace right here. So I still, like I said, got to cut the holes and then I'm going to, um, hammer make a little form for that and hammer those those edges out like they're, they're supposed to be to make it look factory and like i said i still got to go in here and fine tune it but all in all it worked well it somewhat worked I, I mean it worked okay it's gonna work After beating on this thing for four hours straight, just planishing and hammering and using the sledgehammer to get these these edges nice and nice and flat and get this thing up right here in this area because there's a little there's a little connecting piece that goes from or another brace that goes in here on the side that you have to get past and then there's a hole here that, that gets cut and then there's an edge that gets hammered out on that. And then I ended up hammering these back flat because they were in the way. So this and this have to get folded over and at a 90. But all in all, I'm getting real super close to where I'm, I'm touching here, there I'm touching, I'm touching here, a little, a little manipulating and I can, I'm gonna be touching the, the pinch weld there. And then of course, over here on the top, it's another relief hole here and then the edge is folded out the edge is, the edge is going to be folded down right here it folds this way like a little dog ear and then it'll weld to the, the uh, door frame right there so finally after four hours of just hammering on this thing and i still got to make a little a little bit more of an edge here on this little this corner here but really what i was focused on is this edge right here because it has that other piece that sticks up right there and it has that fold so it has to have this this angle here to go around that piece or go over that piece but all in all it's really, really really close so that's good so for context here's the old one the old rusted rusted out one all this area was just crumbled to nothing kind of just hammered it back oh 
So we, we hammered it back into place just to get a tape pattern. If you weren't following, the tape pattern was done on a flat piece of that steel. And we made a hammer form, hammered it out, and then took it to the to the anvil. They're not really anvils, they're these big ass heavy duty A-frames that I got and just got some uh, got some iron C channel over there on the ground and just hammered on these things and got them into shape where they fit and it and it actually looks pretty factory I mean other than like all the million little hammer marks and I could pick and file this thing and I and I started to you know but this thing's not even seen the kick panel literally goes right over that so you can't even see it so and then this part all gets covered by the rocker and the floor is right here the floor comes right here and does a 90 so this is under the car and then this is the only thing that's exposed it's like from here to there so really all that's going to be kind of hammer marked is that you're going to see is up here if you take the if you take the kick panel off nobody's going to drive around with the kick panel off so if anybody gets on me about oh i should have cleaned that up better uh, they got that. so that's what it is. that's what it is right now we are going to primer back of this and paint it I still got some holes over here from when I ripped it I ripped it there just because it got soft and got thin because that was a big transition there and then I also ripped it right here which I already welded up and I think I also ripped it right there which I welded up and I can also weld from the other side as well so whenever I do weld this on today I will weld all the rest of that up but that's it right there. And then in here, you can see on the car itself, I am going, I already got the weld prepped. And that's the main thing with this welding, this old sheet metal is you gotta prep it nice. Like I got in here with my, my 36 on, uh, on the roll lock, little, little three inch and got in here and prepped that all nice. And then I got in here with the, with one of these old scotch bright hardened pads and got in there and really went to town on it too to clean all the rest of that rust up there's only a little spot that i don't like it's right here but i'm gonna go ahead and spray some rust reformer in there so some rust some rust stopper rust converter primer that i got looked all over for weld through primer to put on these welds but couldn't find any anywhere this morning so basically i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is just go ahead and use use some uh, for now i'm gonna order some some uh, weld through primer for the rest of this car but for right now because i want to get this thing welded together i'll use some etching primer some zinc primer and then just clean out the holes as best as possible and a little bit of paint in there just to kill any 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 existing rust that's in there i already kind of welded some stuff inside you can kind of see in there just to kind of like keep everything held together which it's already held together by this weld and then that big ass plate goes over here and welds and joins these two the door frame and the a the a pillar or cow panel whatever you want to call it and the rocker and the floor so it's a pretty pretty strong section right here of the car but we want to we want to you know have that integrity to where no bending or no misalignment is going to take place so i make sure i measured everything with the calipers and went to the other side and measured everything and everything's exactly where it's supposed to be so time to weld it in
I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I even gave it like a nice little buzz with the 80 grit on the DA and went around. Of course, I didn't get in here and like peck and file every little spot. And I could have done that. If it was something on the outside, I'd probably take a little bit more time and, and actually do the finish on it a little nicer in metal. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Um, the only thing that I probably would have done different would be in here, it kept running away from me and then I had to go back and grind and I'd weld and grind. So I'd probably in here do like, like another little piece and then join that or make this another piece in here and do like a, whatever the, whatever the angle would be in there. And, and you know, but another little piece in here that probably be the only thing I did different because like I said, it did get away from me. You can see there's some holes in here. Do a little close up where there's still some, some deficits there as far as filler wire goes. But the, the floor or actually the rocker, this inner, inner part does actually come across here. So you won't even see most of this stuff and then the floor goes up like this and down so so you won't really see any of that stuff and i'll coat it with some epoxy and get that all nice and like i said before the only thing you're going to see is like from this part right here where the where the floor is going to continue here and up is the only part you'll see so from about here like that little section is the only part you're going to see on the inside and then in here you have rocker and I'm gonna go ahead and make that little section of rocker um, I got a measure I think this is 20 gauge or 18 but probably make a make a section of the rocker and and I'll go in here and, and just finish off that rocker and then we'll get our floor pans and put them in there to to finish that but um, I thought about buying the rocker because they do make it but I think the only section we're gonna need is right there. The other side, we're definitely gonna need way more because there's more damage on that inner rocker, so. There it is, all its glory.